Now my whole thing split up. I'm like, damn, man, what the fuck? These young bucks making them bucks. We had the whole city with us. It's like party city with us. Microsoft recently tweeted that on July 23rd of 2020, they will be having their Xbox Games Showcase, which is a much simpler name for the Xbox Presents Xbox Presentation thing bullshit that they had about a month or two ago. Honestly, it wasn't worth going back to research the exact name because the original showcase was nothing to write home about, especially compared to what Sony showed us with their PlayStation 5 reveal showcase. But that's on another video for another day. Let's talk about the hashtag that's been traveling around the Twitterverse as of late from a large number of fans called the hashtag Banjo Redewey. Now, if you're a bit confused on what this tweet is referring to, let me enlighten you. Back in the 1990s, June 29th, 1998 to be specific, the gaming community was blessed with what I consider one of the best platformers to ever hit the market, Banjo-Kazooie, a sprawling adventure game about a kind but gullible bear with an asshole and sarcastic bird companion. Banjo being the name of the bear and Kazooie being the name of the bird respectively. The game was among the few games that could actually compete with the juggernaut platformer at the time that was Mario 64 or Super Mario 64 for you people that like to be extremely specific anyway and like I stated earlier in a lot of ways the game was just as good if not better than Mario 64 the worlds were creative the characters were hilarious Gruntilda the ugly evil witch antagonist of the game was a captivating villain in her own right simple and shallow yes but interesting nonetheless you see, while Bowser in the Mario series was more concerned about marrying the beauty in the woman he kidnapped, Gruntilda was more concerned by developing a contraption to steal the beauty that she saw in the girl that she kidnapped. She also rhymed with every sentence she spoke, which I thought was hilarious at the time. But getting back onto the clit riding train that I was on, the worlds were interesting and creative to say the least. One of the many standouts to me would be Click Clock Woods. Out of all the levels you could explore, Click Clock Woods was the ninth and final world that was accessible in Gruntilda's lair. It was a forest with a big ass tree in the center that was season themed. So depending on which season you chose to explore in this world, different areas of the world that previously were unreachable, let's say in summer for example, may now be reachable with these certain obstacles being removed or affected in the winter level, if that makes any sense. But this video is not meant to be a review of Banjo-Kazooie, it's meant for context. This has been explored in many more in-depth YouTube videos, so I won't tread too long. But you see, at the time, the developers Rare were the ones responsible for making the two Banjo-Kazooie games. Yes, it has a sequel, it was amazing. But to make a long story short, as time went on, Microsoft eventually bought Rare the company, and years later, they eventually made another Banjo-Kazooie game for the Xbox 360 titled Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. The game was not as widely praised and received as the first two mainstream titles that were originally released for the Nintendo 64. Unfortunately, corporate influence was skeeted all over the structure of Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Instead of making a high-definition continuation of the series, completing the trio, Rare decided that the game should be more centered around LEGO NASCAR Wannabes, the video game. Some people were open-minded to the change, some were not. Either way, it caused a split between the game's fan base. Now let's take it back just a little bit. Back on July 11, 2019, a shocking announcement was revealed to the gaming community at one of Nintendo's famous video game direct showcases. Microsoft partnered with Nintendo to announce that fucking Banjo-Kazooie will be playable in the Super Smash Bros. video game. This for a short while caused a delightful uproar on the internet. Fans were excited, including myself. But not just for him being in the Super Smash Bros. game, but what this decision could possibly mean in the grand scheme of things. Is this Microsoft's way of testing if there is still a market interested in these two characters, Banjo and Kazooie? And Microsoft, if you're watching this video, I hope you realize that the answer is Yes. Yes, there is. Think of all the video game platformers that are thriving or making a comeback. Spyro and Crash both had remakes and is selling like hotcakes, and now Crash is receiving a fourth title to its original trilogy. I'm sure Spyro is sure to follow. Ratchet and Clank showed us the beauty of fun and imagination powered by the SSD in the PlayStation 5, and I don't know if developer Ember Labs' Kenna Bridge of Spirits is a platformer or not, but it definitely has the look and feel of one. Microsoft, do you see the trend here? Yes. We love our quote unquote serious games as much as the next person. You know, the fucking Last of Us, the fucking Halos, the Laura Cross. We love that just as much as the next person. But contrary to popular belief, even us adults like to sit back and enjoy more colorful, 
shooter hard adventure like games like the ones that I just mentioned. Microsoft, with your next Xbox showcase being right around the corner, and from my understanding this showcase should be focused on your exclusive games, I can only pray that videos like this one grab someone's attention to announce a Banjo-Kazooie game if one is already in the process of being made, and if one is not in the process of being made, I hope videos like this make the process happen. Make the fucking game. Mario is still making shit happen for Nintendo. Ratchet and Clank and Kenya is looking promising for PlayStation. Microsoft, you have a secret weapon in your arsenal with the rights to Banjo-Kazooie. The data and crowd reaction I'm sure has shown you that there is a market for a true, a true remake and continuation of the franchise. It's completely up to you on whether or not you're going to capitalize on it or only rely on Halo like you've been doing. I suppose we will see in the coming weeks on the 23rd of July. Hey, let me know what you think. Do you want a Banjo-Kazooie remake? Do you want them to continue with the franchise? Or are you good and you just want to stick to your regular shooters and your regular action adventure games? Let me know what you think, man. I think there's a big, I think there's a very big audience that really wants to see this game return. And hopefully this video helped does something about it. I'll see you guys on the next one.